everybody, Dave Brown and Corey Macklin here at ringside. We are ready to go with another day of USWA Championship Wrestling. Got a big card coming up here. Yeah, we've got a big show today. We'll see the man of the 90s, Tony Falk. He's scheduled for a match today. Flamboyant Eric Embry's on the card. We've got two matches that we had scheduled last week. One of them was a Southern Heavyweight title match. Brian Christopher and Dr. Tom Pritchett didn't get a chance to finish that bout, so we will have that bout right here today on TV. We'll see Jerry Lawler, Jeff Jarrett. They're on the card. Cat Jarrett and Dirty White will be here today. And uh, much more. Yes, big indeed. Lineups. Got a big one coming up. Got the Moon Dogs uh, scheduled to come in here today, too, a little bit later on. We'll be back. We better get to it. See you in just a moment. Stay with us. Right here. I know you got a world title match, ladies' world title match coming up here. Coming up against Lauren Davenport. Oh, let me tell you, Miss Davenport, honey, I think you got a Milton problem. Because week after week, you come out here and beat up on Tony Falk, that big goof, Tony Falk. I don't know. Uh, I think you need to be put away because uh, you do have a mental problem. And Monday night, you have a match against me, a title match at that. But, you know, oh, okay. Oh, uh, it's Lauren Davenport. Now, listen. Cratchit smacks her with that with that bedpan. What? what oh, come on. Oh, come on. Hey. Oh, boy. Let's get this stopped. Yeah, let's get the camera off of that. Oh, boy, I tell you. Here comes some help. Here comes Dirty White Girl. Come on. Oh, boy. Get these. I tell you. Cam out here to help. Miss Texas, and now they even it up at two apiece, and there all of a sudden, Lauren Davenport and Nurse Cratchit head out of here. Thank goodness. Well, that's, uh, thank, thanks, Kim, for coming out to help right there. I tell you what, let's do, let's just, let's, uh, 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 the uh, USWA Wrestling Academy, let's uh, take a look at that situation right here. USWA Wrestling Academy. If it's your dream to join the top stars in professional wrestling, if it's your ambition to climb into the squared circle, if all you've been waiting for is a chance to learn pro wrestling, now the USWA Wrestling Academy is underway. Fitness trainers gym in Goodlettsville, Tennessee. Personal instruction in bodybuilding, weight control, health, nutrition, and personality projection. Learn to be a professional wrestler taught by the top stars in the USWA. Send us a address stamped envelope to USWA Wrestling Academy, P.O. Box 1783, Hendersonville, Tennessee, 37077. Learn with the best, the USWA. All right, there's that information. Well, you see, Tony Falk scheduled here with Lauren Davenport. Chris Frazier already in the ring, and here they come. Lord Chris is in the ring right here. Lauren Davenport yelling, where where yeah. are they? I think they're looking for Miss Texas. Yeah, well, they're gone. Well, oh, I tell you what, how disgusting. Well, you now they're trying That's to do an interview with Miss Texas and they're about the uh, title match coming up. And all of a sudden, here comes Lauren Davenport. Starts shoving her around. Well, nobody shoves Miss Texas around. Yeah. She shoved her back, and then here comes Nurse Cratchit with that bedpan and blasted her with it. That was really something. The whole thing was just ridiculous. That Lauren Davenport came out here and very scratching with that bedpan. Well, we got fantastic. her behind us here, maybe. Let's go with the match. Tony Falk against Chris Frazier. Tony Falk, man of the 90s, would have to be considered a favorite, especially with his manager over in the corner, Lauren Davenport. Tony Falk's really been coming on with that $1,000 bonus hanging over his head, and he is the man of the 90s for Lauren Davenport working Chris Frazier over. Yes, Frazier in the throat there. Tony Fall takes Chris Frazier, whips him into the ropes. Gets there with a big forearm, takes Frazier down. Tony Fall in the USWA and has 
taking Lauren Davenport's offer as her man of the night is as Falk is looking good. Big Got him move with that there. neck breaker. Yeah. Snapped that reverse neck breaker on him, and Chris Frazier comes up holding his neck. Tony Falk drops down with a fist. Lauren Davenport livid as she jumps around the ring, shouting instructions to Tony Falk. Still around the ring there yelling at referee Kevin Christian. He's telling her to have a seat over there. Meanwhile, Tony Falk is choking Chris Frazier in the ring. Really working Frazier over, choking him over there. Falk comes down on Chris Frazier with a big boot. Falk asking for instructions from Laura Davenport. She said, finish him off. Falk's trying to do just that, too. He catches Frazier as he comes off the ropes with an elbow. Snaps him over. The man of the army, Tony Falk, follows with a lead out on Chris Frazier. One ball, 15 minutes in time. We've still got our Southern heavyweight battle bout that's lined up here today on Championship Wrestling. And a lot more action still to come. Falk still choking Chris Frazier there. Referee Kevin Christian trying to get Lauren Davenport to have herself a seat over there. And she yep. just won't do it. She's distracting the uh, referee so that Falk can continue to choke Chris Frazier. Then when the referee turns back, magically, Tony says, hey, I'm just here uh, trying to get a pin on him. Falk with a big backdrop down on Chris Frazier. Took Frazier down with that one. Frazier's had a tough day, no doubt about it. Here's a boot to the side of the head, and Tony Falk just continues to work on him. Tony Falk, as uh, we have said in weeks past, can wrestle. I still have difficulty with the concept of Tony Falk as the man of the 90s, as described by Laura Davenport, but Falk is really in control of this one and choking now Chris Frazier on the ropes. Oh, look at yeah, that. yeah, she's going to get her two cents in over there, working Chris Frazier over. Slaps Chris Frazier, and Frazier has not only had a hard day with Tony Falk, but Lauren Davenport is outside the ring and raising sand. She's really upset about the scene that happened a few moments ago, and she's telling Tony Falk to rip Frazier apart. Falk is really working Chris Frazier over, too. Slams him into that turnbuckle. That was a fist. He had it doubled up, and he's got Frazier back under ropes. Now whips him across the way, and that's a bad place because oh. Lauren Davenport smacking him from behind with a doubled up fist. Yeah, she's nailing Chris Frazier over there. Boy, does she clobber him. Tony Falk slamming Frazier in that turnbuckle there. Sets Chris Frazier up. Big bulldog on Frazier. Takes him down to pin cover. One, two, three. Got him. Tony Falk got him. Man of the 90s. Gets the pin. One, two, three over Chris Frazier. Lauren Davenport steps into the ring and sends Tony Falk back to work on Chris Frazier. Now she's stomping on his upper arm. Not satisfied that Tony... Oh, look at this. She's not happy with the way Tony won the match. I don't know if it took too long or if he didn't... Uh, didn't hurt Frazier enough or whatever it is, but she is very unhappy with Tony Falk. Yeah, she's still having Falk to jump on Chris Frazier there. Lauren Davenport is just... Boy, she slapped Falk again. Telling Falk to really work Frazier over here now. Tony Falk dominated the bout. Lauren Davenport takes that strap off, and there she's lashing Tony Falk at that strap. As she lashes Falk, Falk steady beats on Chris Frazier in there. Well, I tell you, a thousand dollar bonus. Oh, look out! Here the comes the kickers. She goes after both of them, and Lauren Davenport decides it's time to get out of here. She heads on out of here. Tony Falk leads too, and Miss Texas. She brought a belt of her own this time. Trying to get even with Lauren Davenport. She's now over talking to the referee, checking on Chris Frazier. 
Frazier, uh, boy, what a beating he took. He really had a rough, rough day against Fra against uh, Tony Falk. I thought Falk was really working him over pretty badly, but Lauren Davenport was not happy with the situation at all. The, uh, the crowd uh, happy with the situation as Miss Texas now is on the way out of here. We will be back right after this. Okay, right now, we, uh, well, we had a match schedule right here, but uh, instead, I am told we are going to be talking to Eric Embry about... All right, here comes Richard Lee and the Moondog. They had been scheduled here. Richard? I've just been informed that there's not going to be a match. Your opponents did not show up here today. No opponents, so you get them out of the ring. Hey, this is getting ridiculous. Every week, it's the same stuff. I know what's going on between you and Corey, senile Eddie Marlin, and everybody else that's got anything to do with hurting my dog. There's a conspiracy going on here. You figure, out of sight, out of mind, everybody's going to forget about my dog. Boys, it don't work that way. Week after week after week after week. Jeff Jarrett and Jerry Lawler have been trying to hurt my dog. As soon as I get one heel, they turn around and hurt another one. I had to get Spike out of the hospital before his brain actually healed just because of the fact they put Spike back in the hospital. Well, boys, let me tell you something. I don't get my dog wound up and ready to go for nothing. And there's going to be some raw meat for my dog before this day's over. And mark my word, anybody that gets in this ring today is going to be me for my dog. For none, mark my word, Richard Lee said. All right, Richard Lee, we're not going to put up with that now. The Moon Dogs can just head out of here. They win. They win. The opponents did not show up. It's a forfeit by the opponents. So... That's it. You might as well take them back to the dressing room and, uh, and get on the highway and head for wherever you're supposed to be next because there's not going to be a match with the Moon Dogs here today. We, uh, He's out here blaming you and I, Dave. Yeah, yeah, we have, well, we have nothing to do. That's, of course, ridiculous, as, as is most of the other stuff that, uh, that he talks about. Oh, boy, Richard Lee. Well, there they go. They head on out of here. Now, according to, uh, to what I understand, we're supposed to have a, uh, an interview uh, coming up here with Eric Embry. Eric's got a match schedule coming up here, too, and we might as well go ahead and, and pull that match up, I think, after the interview here. Uh, you know something, Dave Brown? I don't feel too good today, and I ain't in a good mood, man, because it's real that plain simple. How much longer is it going to go, dirty white boy? How much longer is it going to go? You know, I'll tell you. We had him at last man standing. And I come out with my hand in the air. But that wasn't enough. And this wig man, it's going to be the guy that can walk out of the arena. And everybody knows they grab that I'm the toughest son of a gun that's ever walked out of the in the USWF. So white boy, I tell you a little secret too. I got something for you, man. Whether it be at the arena or whether it be right here today, that'll make you a real dirty white boy. Here. One other thing, Richard Lee. I heard what you said. Don't chew your dog Jack with me, man. I don't know. Eric Embry is talking about Tony Anthony, the dirty white boy, and that situation. And uh, right now, T.D. Steele is in the ring. He's the opponent for the flamboyant one, Eric Embry. As Embry takes off the shirt and is ready to go, the bell is sounded. And, Corey, here we go. T.D. against Embry. Embry said he was in a bad mood. He looks like it. Yeah, it looks like it, Dave. And not only that, he sounds like it. Warning Richard Lee about the Moondogs not interfering in his bout, and uh, Embry is going to work on T.D. Steele, his opponent here today. One ball, 15-minute time limit, and Eric Embry comes out and just smashes T.D. Steele. He's been blasting him with a closed fist. He hadn't hit him with an open hand yet, and he hasn't really put a wrestling move on him. It's all just been battering as he's gone after T.D. There's a big body slam. Well, there's a wrestling move, but that isn't. Look at that. He grabs yeah. him with both hands yeah. around the throat. 
Big body slam, too. He picked TD up and smashed him down to the mat. Eric Embry. Oh, uh, he lifts. Big one. A lot of power that Eric Embry has. Oh, yeah. He's showing it here today. Indeed he does, David. He's working. There's another move there that's not legal at all. Not that we see many from this guy. Eric Embry. Screaming Texas. And TD Steele is the opponent today for Embry. Slam Steele into the turnbuckle. TD's hardly been on his feet. Stepped in the ring, and Eric Embry's been after him ever since the bout started. Sets TD Steele up now. Oh! Side suplex. Wow, look at that. There's a cover. One, two. Oop, he picked him up. Let's him up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know how many times I can complain about that. I just hate to see it. You know, got the you got guy the yeah. sure. Go ahead and pin it. Oh, oh they got Boondog's coming back. The whistle's blowing. They've got garbage cans and boards. They head oh. into the ring. Eric Embry comes after them. Embry's walking over the Moondog in there. They take CD and throw him out on the concrete floor. They're working Embry over now. Both of the Moondogs on Eric Embry. Smashes Embry with it. Boy, they're working on Eric Embry in here. Richard Lee, get your guys out. Man, let me tell you something, Eric oh, Embry. We'll check with anybody we darn well please, boy. You or anybody else. I told you, anybody that hit this way today, it's dog me, brother. Richard, you need to get your guys out here is what you need to do. I'm standing here watching this as the Moondogs are beating up Eric Embry with a garbage can over the head. They have already broken a board over his head. Eric Embry, someone that you would suspect, would be on the same side as the Moondogs. Oh, well, they're uh, working Embry over some kind of bad day. Well, they are upset. Richard Lee and, of course, the Moondog, they do whatever he tells them to do. Yeah, he came roaring in here. Here's Eddie Marlin. Maybe he can get order restored in all of this. Embry was well on his way to a victory here in the match against T.D. Steele. He never got an official pin. That was his fault because he could have pinned him early. Right. And then all of a sudden, the Moondogs hit the ring and go after not so much T.D. Steele, but Eric Embry, all right, let's get out of here. We'll be back in just a moment. Tell you what, we've got a uh, Southern heavyweight title match coming up here in just a few minutes, really looking forward to. Before we get to that, a little bit uh, about last Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. It was uh, Lawler and Jarrett in the ring against the Moon Dogs. Here are just a few highlights of what happened in that one. Yeah. 
Brown set up in that corner and swings it after. Watch that wood over there. He's swinging that thing. You saw what happened there, and as you described it right there at ringside, uh, Richard Lee got involved in that. Eric e Embry has been out here for three hey, minutes man, screaming. Man. Hey, it's, it's, it's obvious, man, that I ain't the most popular person around here. Yeah. That's obvious. But that's fine if that place ended. Because I ain't tried to win no popularity contest since the first day I stepped foot in the Mid-South. So the feeling's neutral, you understand? Real that play simple, Moondog. You done boxed up the wrong tree, I got. Oh, you ain't gonna like what I'm fixing to say. And you're gonna sit there. They're gonna sit there. And all you people out there are gonna sit there. And you're gonna boo. But I don't care. Because I'm talking straight to two people. Two people that know the Moondog better than anybody on the face of the earth. And that's you, Jeff Jarrett, and that's you, Jerry Lowe. You guys listen, because you two guys need me to be your partner. You understand? Lowe and Jarrett need me to be your partner. It's real simple, Dave Brown. There ain't no three men on the face of God's green earth that can whoop Jerry Lowe and Jeff Jarrett me. Lowe and Jeff. I'm asking you, man, let me be your partner. You need me. You know, they, they got to have me. Where's Robbie Fuller? Well, here they come. We can ask them, but I tell you what, I, I don't expect to be greeted with open arms here. He beat me up like I just got beat up, man. I'll go to the lowest of low. I'll scoop that low enough to tag with these two to get back to those guys. You, you'll scoop down low enough to tag with them? You let me be your partner, just them dogs, man. You guys need somebody like me. No, there ain't nobody like me. You guys need me to be your partner. Let me be your partner, Lawler. Man, I don't like you any more than you like me, I thought. But I know how that blade tough you are. You know how tough I am. And I know how tough you are. And you know how tough I am. So let me be your partner, man. You need me. Why do, why, why do we need you for our partner? I just told you. You know how tough I am, Lawler. It's Red Lawler. You draw a fine line when it comes to winning and losing on what you'll do. You'll go a lot farther than him, man. But I'll walk through hell and back to win a match to beat somebody up. I'm the lowest of the low, man. Uh, you know better than anybody just how nasty and mean I can be, Lawler. And Jeff, you know it pretty good, too. That's why you guys need me, man. Richard Lee's got the sickest mind in the world until you put it up against me. That's why you need me. Hey, first of all, Eric, and you maybe you maybe ask these people right here. Me and Lawler have faced the Moon Dogs time in and time again, and I think me and Lawler alone have done a pretty dead gum good job but on our. They're still here. Those eight second dogs are still here, man. You did a good job, but where's Fuller? Where's Bay? Where's Austin Adams? Oh, you so-called buddies, man! You're, you're afraid to show their face. Right what well, ain't three of them stupid? And there could be three of us. You need me, man, because you know I don't care what it takes. I don't care. I don't care, man. You need me. Let me be your partner. Let me just say this, Eric Embry. Let me, let me, I think I'm speaking for myself, for Jeff, and probably for all these people. You came out here and you said, 
You didn't go out of your way to make any friends. You didn't go out of your way to win any popularity contest. You didn't want any friends. Well, now, Eric Embry, you ain't got any friends. You made your bed. You've heard the old saying. Yeah. I'm asking you to let me be your partner, Lawler. Hey, we, uh, we need partners we can trust. And in this case, you made your bed. Now you got to lie in it. Well, I don't think we need you, Eric Embry. That's the word, Mr. Embry. I think that's an excellent point from Jerry Lawler. Didn't need anybody, and now they don't need him. So it looks like that par pairing will not occur. We are going to take a break as Eric Embry is still upset. We'll be back in a moment. In the ring, the referee, Kevin Christian, and walking around the ring, the Texas and Southern heavyweight champion, Brian Christopher. Christopher is here for a title match today. Here comes his opponent, Dr. Tom Pritchard, stepping into the ring. Southern heavyweight title on the line. Corey, you mentioned earlier that this match, uh, we had tried to have it last week, but due to outside interference, it got stopped. And uh, we had hoped to be able to uh, reschedule it. And sure enough, we got it for you here today. Brian Christopher's Southern heavyweight title is on the line. Dr. Tom Pritchard with Miss Texas in his corner out here to try to take the belt away from Brian Christopher. It's underway for the Southern title and uh, promoted Eddie Marlin has decided to re-sign the belt here today for TV, special TV time. And Brian Christopher, the holder of the belt, uh, he's got to kiss it and hold it and finally gives it over to the referee. And there's the Southern title and referee indicating if, uh, yeah, there we go. We are ready to go here. The Southern Heavyweight title. The belt's over here on the table for safekeeping. And it is at stake. Look at this. <laughs> Tom Pritchard, the challenger, trying to take control early. I tell you what, no love lost between these two. Brian Christopher won the Texas title from Tom Pritchard some weeks ago. And by ways that Tom Pritchard uh, was not at all happy. So Pritchard is glad to get this shot at the Southern title here today. Pritchard snaps Christopher over. Got Brian Christopher in the headlock now. Dr. Tom Pritchard, the challenger for the Southern heavyweight belt. Back on his feet and the test here. Christopher trying to get the extra leverage, and yeah, he does by pulling the hair. That's what he had to do to get Dr. Tom Pritchard down. Snatched him by the hair. Referee asking Christopher about it. Of course, he's going to deny it and said no. Yeah, this Texas over there tried to confirm that that's exactly what had happened, but the match continues. Christopher leaps over, comes back under. Pritchard takes him down. Nice move there by Dr. Tom Pritchard. Lexus is there. Takes Christopher down, face to the mat. That's right. Humiliation as that face was buried into the mat there for a moment. Christopher went into that. There, there he is. Look at that. The crybaby yeah. look is what I call it. Boy, he's not happy. Dr. Tom has the upper hand here. The champion in trouble. He is indeed. He's got himself a tough opponent. And Dr. Tom Pritchard... Yeah. Christopher, he's got him back in uh, in the corner. Look at this. Thought he was going to give him a clean break there, but nah, no shot. way. Reversal. Christopher comes on. Big back drive by Dr. Tom Pritchard and a nice takedown. Takes Christopher down. Southern heavyweight title at stake. Normally we have a one-hour time limit on championship matches, but as longtime wrestling fans are well aware, special rules for television title matches, and that's the case here today. We'll take whatever time is needed. It is possible that we would have to break during the action for a commercial break, depending on uh, the time situation. We'll keep you posted. The Southern heavyweight title hangs in the balance. Dr. Tom Pritchard, the challenger for the belt. That's Christopher over. I guess Dr. Tom Pritchard's had the upper hand so far in this battle. There's the champion, as for now, anyway, Brian Christopher. Richard, working that arm over. 
Christopher has got that left arm of Christopher twisting that arm. Bill Horgan bound Christopher over. Oh, Christopher. That way he gets out. Pitcher is touching off on the atomic D drive. Right, Christopher almost had himself going. He broke out of that move and Pritchard slowed him down with that atomic D drive. Tell you what, at this point, Brian Christopher needs to maybe start thinking of himself as only the Texas champion because Tom Pritchard is definitely in control. Oh, yeah. Going after this Southern belt. Tom Pritchard's had the upper hand, I mean. Majority of this bout. Brian Christopher, smart move there. He backed Pritchard up against the turnbuckle and then caught him with a elbow and a couple of double up fists there. Yeah, what a cheap shot. I mean, the referee had called for the break. Tom Pritchard had already relaxed, expecting Christopher to walk away. What does he do? Smacks him with that elbow. Right. This Brian Christopher won't give you a little break. Ah, oh, Pritchard! Christopher with a jump and he's going to work on Brian Christopher. Tom Pritchard, right hand, he nails Christopher. Pritchard takes Christopher by his side. That's it. Oh no. Here comes Richard Lee and those stupid moves off. I tell you. The match oh, is over. This kind of stuff. Now this is, you can't have a bout for these stupid guys. Richard Lee's got that chair in there and Mike comes in and nails Richard with it. Bring us some more dog meat, baby. Let me tell you something. When you hurt an animal, everybody knows a wounded animal is the most dangerous animal. Eddie Marlin out to tell him. All right, I agree with you, Eddie. The match is over. It's going to be a no contest officially there. Let's go to a break. We'll be back. Once again, I have the uh, Southern title match here, and we had it, and everything was going along nicely. Tom Pritchard really looked like he was pretty well in control of the match, and here come the dogs again. So that one again is going to be no contest. The title match. Once again, is over interrupted by the Moon Dogs. Enough about that. Let's talk about uh, the action coming up around the territory. And there's quite a bit of it in the next yeah, coming weeks. Quite a bit of it, uh, starting in Biggersville, Mississippi. Thursday night, April 23rd, bell time, 8 o'clock at the high school gym. There, Jeff Jarrett, Moon Dogs, Cat Garrett, Bullwood Hastings on the card. Keith Haynes. Tickets are on sale now at Rogers Supermarket for Biggersville, Mississippi. Spring Spectacular coming up in Jonesboro, Arkansas, Saturday night in Jonesboro. Saturday night, April 25th. There at the Old Bell Community Center. Six big matches. Moon Dogs on the card. Jeff Jarrett, ladies match. Eight-man ladies mixed tag. Plus much more in Jonesboro lined up for Saturday, April 25th. Spring Spectacular in Jonesboro. Friday night, May 1st, championship wrestling back in baseball, Mississippi. South Panola High School, 8 o'clock bell time. Lawler, Jarrett, Moon Dogs all lined up for Batesville. Friday night, May 8th, Clarksville, Mississippi, at the Civic Auditorium there. Bell time is at 8 o'clock. All of the USWA top stars are lined up for Clarksville. That's USWA wrestling on tour. And when it comes to your town, be right there and nothing see all the like, action. Nothing yeah, like a live well. wrestling action as we've seen here today in spite of the Moon Dog. We've got more action to go. We've got Jerry Lawler and Jeff Jarrett coming up when we return. Oh. Right now, we got the invaders, and on the way, the king, Jerry Lawler, and Jeff Jarrett. Here comes the referee, and there they are. Jeff leads the way, and there's the king with it. We're set to go with tag team action here on USWA Championship Wrestling today. Boy, what a favorite team this is. You got two popular individuals who have folded themselves into a very popular and very successful team in Jarrett and Lawler. Good team, too, when they work together. Doing well, and over greeting all of the fans. Jeff Jarrett climbs up into the squared circle, and we're ready to go, just about ready to go for tag team action. One fall, 15 minutes in time. The Invaders wrestling under the mask. Lawler and Jarrett 
I, I guarantee you Lawler at some point will try to remove one of those masks. He, uh, he's not too happy to see people come in there hiding their identity like that. As soon as the referee gives the signal, and there it is. We are ready to go. The bell sounds, and Corey, we're underway. We're underway, Dave, and as you just pointed out, Lawler's already talking about the mask. The invader said, no, no, no way. You know, you know what he's doing? And this is a very successful tactic. Jerry Lawler perfected some of these over the years. What he has done right now is he's got that guy thinking, hey, I better watch it. He's going to take my mask That's off. That's right. Distract him a little bit. That is a big distraction, too, because you hold on to your mask. When your opponent's working you over, it doesn't do you too much good. The invaders! All right, well, it's already sounded. Uh, there. Apparently, they didn't hear the bell, so we ring it again. <laughs> now let's go. Lower! Squares up with the invader. Takes him down, the king! Holding on tight to the invader. Got him in a headlock. <laughs> Great shot of the king. With his opponent in a headlock, lying on the mat. Tell you what, heavy favorites here, of course, Lawler and Jarrett. Oh, yeah. Just great to see him in action. There's a tag, nice tag. Here's Jeff coming in. Nails the invader. Holds him tight. Invader whips Jeff into the ropes. Jarrett comes off with a big shoulder on the invader. Twisting the arm of the invader. Still working him over. Thanks, partner. Jerry Lawler. Oh, Lawler came in the ring and the invader rolled over and tagged his partner. And his partner didn't move too quick that time. Just kind of gradually stepped his way into the ring. Took his time. Dangles up with the king, and Lawler backs him up against the turnbuckle. Oh, he just threw him out of there. Oh, big drop kick by Lawler. Takes the invader down. The king said, how about that mask? Yeah, the crowd exploded when he said, you wanted that mask off? They, yes, they want it off. Didn't do it. Referee, I'm sure, has said something to Jerry about that. The mask is not at stake here today and should be left alone. Here comes the other invader back in. He's the one that started the, uh, the match. Tangles up with Lawler. He's got Jerry in a headlock there. Tighten it up on the king. Waller had a hand on that mask, <laughs> and the invaders started yelling, no, 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 no. Waller's got his hand on it again. He's seen the shot there. Oh, oh, the invader trying to hold on to Waller in that headlock and try to hold on to his mask, too. He's got it untied. Waller going after that. That's the string of that mask, and the invader got to lose some kind of way. We want the mask, says the crowd. The invaders. You better to... believe. <laughs> if there's any way the king can get to it, he'll get to it, too. That's true. There he goes again, trying to take it off without untying it this time. Well, he's about oh. halfway, got it off. That's part of oh, no, oh, yeah. Yeah. come again. I'm sick and tired of these guys coming out here, interfering. Break that board on Jarrett. Richard Lee and these crazy moon dogs, this stuff has just gotten out of hand. Lawler rammed into the chair by the moon dogs. Now they blast it across his back. And here's the dog me we've been waiting on, brother, because these are the ones that's been trying to put my dogs out of action. Well, what's what my dogs do to them? Because they ain't got no friends either, brother. They do have friends, too. And let me tell you this. 
Every time we've seen you against Lawler and Jared lately, it's always from behind the back or something underhanded, right. That's right. like holding onto their leg from outside. You come in here today and interfere in a match that they've got going on and jump them from behind. And now, oh, he's, did, that's bad. He splashed off that oh, rope yeah. right on the top of Jeff. All of that weight on top of Jeff, off of that middle rope. Just came flying down on Jeff. And now referee Kevin Christian in there. These moon dogs are just completely out of control. This kind of stuff, you can't have any match scheduled without these guys interfering. Ever since they found out today that they, their opponents didn't show, oh, what has Embry oh, got? Look out! Look out, out he's got Embry. a sack of flour. Oh, Embry! What's that over there? Here he comes over here. With that flour and powder, it's all over the camera there. It's all over us at ringside. And Embry comes in with that powder and has it working the Moon Dogs over, over on the curtain over there and gets Richard Lee and the guys out of here. Moon Dogs are trying to get the stuff out of their eyes and Embry is working them over. They're gone. Eric Embry got rid of them with a big old sack of flour. Lolly, Jack! You need me to be your partner, man, because that just proves that I'm the dirtiest scum of earth, man. I don't care what it takes. I don't care what I've got to do with you, man. But I swear to you, man, as long as there's a breath left in this body, I'm going to even the score, man. I'm going to even the score. Let me be your partner. Let's get rid of it. know how nasty I can be, Lola. You know how nasty I can be, Jeff. Let me say one thing, Eric Embry. I know. I hear you out here running your mouth about how tough you are. I know you're tough. I Jeff know. Jarrett knows you're tough. We also know that you are a low-life stinking slime, just like you say that's you are. Exactly. I'm the lowest of low, man. And we walked out here just a few minutes ago. That's what everybody was saying. What a low-life scum that you are. Not I am life. a low-life. That's why you need me. Because I'll do anything. You understand? Yeah, I understand that you will do anything. And that's exactly you got to understand. That's what Jeff and I are worried about. Because this is a guy that will do anything. How do we know that when we need you the most, when our backs are turned, that you're not going to stab us right in the back and stick it right into the head? How do we know that? I tell you, look at these eyes, Lawler. You look at these eyes. I hate you as much as you hate me, man. But look way down there. And you've got my word that I'll go back to back with you just like a brother, Lawler. I hate you. But we got the same damn thing in common. We got to get rid of the dogs, man. They can let it beat you all up. They got rid of Fuller, they, I, everybody, they do it exactly. Everything Richard Lee says they're going to do. You need me, and I need you. All right. You want to be our partner. Those guys just had a real good idea over there. Now, how about this? Get, get Eddie Marlin out here if we can. And if you want to be our partner, if you say that you are not going to stab us in the back, then you shouldn't mind going for this little stipulation. What about if we agree to take you as our partner, if you try anything sneaky at all, if you dare turn on Jeff and I, that that'll be the last day you ever step foot in the USW. You leave town and be out of here forever. I tell you what. That's that way fine with me. But I tell you something. I am going to be sneaky. I am going to be nasty. But not to you. That are damn good dog than Richard Lee. You've got my word, Lawler. I'll never step foot in another USW ring. I Memphis, Long. Anyway, I won't even wrestle again in Texas if I turn my back on you. That's how bad I want you, dog. That's how bad I want you. Hey, Eddie, if you can do it, if you can do it, He's right. You got to get down in the dirt. You got to get down in the gutter. You got to be not as dirty, but you got to be dirtier than the moon dogs are to beat the moon dogs. And you're looking at three people right here that can't get the job done if he don't turn on us. And now, if he does, he's out of the USWA forever. So, Eddie, exactly we'll right. trust him with that stipulation. Exactly you make the match, the three of us, against those moon dogs and Richard Lee. And, boys, if he signs this match, 
It is all over for you, Moon Dogs. I promise you that. That's Damn, it sounds like a good idea. The match. the match is signed. That's the way it's going to be. That's what everybody's been saying. Exactly. When are you going to get rid of the moon dogs? Well, we're going to get rid of the moon dogs, right? That's exactly right. There ain't three men on the face of God's green earth that can be this three men. Richard Lee, pass the dogs up, man, because I'm a dead by one of them going to the hospital. There they go. Eric Embry, Jerry Lawler, Jeff Jarrett. And I'm still not real comfortable with the pairing, but I'm a lot more comfortable, as are Jeff and Jerry, with that stipulation on there. Hey, I'll tell you what you can do, too. Those Moondogs want to keep coming out here in every match. Well, boys, from this moment on, you got a personal invitation from us three. Come on, bring your butts out here again. We won't wait till this week. We'll take care of you right today. That, uh, that may stop the Moondog from coming out here as quick as anything. Eric Embry, boy, I, I, I've seen him upset before, but I'm not sure I've ever seen him this upset. Let's, uh, what are we doing? Right, let's take a break. That's what we'll do. Then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll come back and we'll fill you in on the situation when we return. all over the studio here as we've become used to it since the moon dogs have been around this time it was eric embry that bought that uh, brought that uh, i don't it, i thought it was a five pound sack of flour it looked more like a 50 pound sack of flowers it's all over the studio here it is everywhere all around anyway let's take a look at the card coming up monday night at the mid-south coliseum opening match of the night the man of the 90s uh that's uh that's actually uh uh reversed <laughs> that's reversed uh, Tony Falk and Dr. Tom Pritchard will be going against each other. We just had the wrong name on the wrong picture in that particular case. Tony Falk against Dr. Tom Pritchard in the opening match. Then, ladies' title match. Now, boy, this one, Miss Texas came out here. She was talking about Lauren Davenport, said she has some real problems, she thought. Well, Lauren Davenport came out and attacked her, and then, as if that weren't enough, brought Nurse Cratchit with her. So these two... You're going to want to see this match, believe me, as the ladies' title will be on the line. Miss Texas going against Lauren Davenport. Then the grudge match. Uh, and come to think of it, I'm not sure that this one will, will actually occur now because Eric Embry, the, the uh, card has been changed, and, and I frankly didn't, uh, didn't check to, to see if uh, the uh, Dirty White Boy Eric Embry grudge match will happen. Probably not, but we'll try to check that. Eight-man mixed tag team match coming up after that. And uh, eight-man, eight-person mixed tag match would be better. On one side of the ring, you got uh, Dr. Death, Lauren Davenport, and Tony Falk with Nurse Cratchit. And on the other side of the ring, you got Dr. Tom Pritchard, Ms. Texas, Dirty White Boy, and Dirty White Girl. All of them involved in the eight-person mixed tag match Monday night at the Coliseum. Southern title will be on the line. Well, Brian Christopher still has the Southern title. He uh, won it here. Well, he didn't really win it here today. It, it was a rule no contest as the title match, which we have tried to bring here for the second week, was stopped due to outside interference by the Moon Dog. So, so the title is still held by Brian Christopher. He will be defending it against Cat Garrett. Then, the main event of the night, and stand back from this one, boy, the Moon Dogs and Richard Lee in the ring. Now, this is not going to be a case now where that uh, Richard Lee is going to be outside and can interfere and can hold somebody's leg from outside. He's going to be in the ring That's with right. the Moon Dogs against Jeff Jarrett, Jerry Lawler, and, believe it or not, Eric Embry. Now, you heard the stipulations just a few moments ago. Lawler and Jarrett have agreed to the match. They've agreed to let Embry be their partner with this one stipulation. If he turns on them at any time during the match, he's out of here. He's not out, only out of town. He is out of the USWA, and he said, mark this down, he won't even wrestle in Texas. That's right. He is out of here if he turns on Lawler and Jarrett. With that stipulation, they said, fine, sign the match. Eddie Marlin said, sounds like a good idea to me. Six-man tag team match coming up for the main event Monday night, and maybe, just maybe, this is the time that we finally are going to get rid of the Moon Dog. 7.30 is when it all begins. Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. Make your plans to be there. Stay with us. We got more action coming up right here when we return. Well, 
that's our ring right there. That's uh, it's full of a flower, uh, just mounds of it in the ring there. We got a match uh, scheduled. Here comes uh, Tom Pritchard out. Tom got blasted by the Moon Dogs here a few minutes ago, and uh, in that championship match which was going on, Tom. You know something, Dave? This makes twice. Twice that the Moon Dogs have interfered in a championship match of mine on TV against a punk like Brian Christopher. <laughs> now today it looks like they got the job done pretty good. And yeah, I may have to have about three or four stitches in the back of my head, but the point is this, boys. I'm a lot tougher than you think. And I know I could have beat a punk like Brian Christopher for the Southern Championship, for the Texas Championship. It doesn't matter what you want to say. But the fact is, anytime you want to step in the ring with me, it doesn't matter. Now, I know I want to get Brian Christopher. I could have defeated him. And Richard Lee wants to take it upon himself to run in every moondog he can. And he wants to destroy the USWA and take it over. Well, that's fine. Because I know deep down in my heart, I could take Brian Christopher and I could wipe him out with him any day, whether it's on TV, whether it's at the arena, or whether it's out back in the alley here. Because you, Brian Christopher, you're not a champion. You're not a wrestler. In fact, they ought to arrest you for impersonating a wrestler, son. <laughs> Now you see, I've been down before, I've been hurt before, and in fact, I may have been beat before, but you, you've never beat me. You've come out here and you've got some five victories on your own, yeah you have. And you are wearing the Southern Championship and you are wearing the Texas Championship. <laughs> but not for long. I'll get Brian Christopher out here challenging Tom to get in the ring and quit talking. He steps in there. There's no referee, but Brian Christopher, here comes a referee right here. And I guess we might as well ring the bell. Yeah, referee says ring the bell, so we'll get a match underway here. I, uh, as as uh, Tom Pritchard is out here and, and he's saying that Brian Christopher is not a true champion, he's never really gotten a victory over him, and uh, he feels like he could have beaten him if it weren't for the Moondogs' interference, Christopher says, hey, quit talking to get in the ring, and then he jumps Tom as he tried to get into the ring, and so far hasn't let up. Tom staggered over to the corner over there, Dave. The Moondogs cut him open in the head there pretty bad when they interfered in that last bout. Got him cut open, and Christopher not making it any better, choking Pritchard over there. Had that boot on his throat, choking him. I, I understand Tom, and especially when he feels the way he does about Brian Christopher wanting to step into the ring and answer the challenge. But really, I mean, Tom is, is not in uh, any condition to uh, come out uh, a difficult uh, match here today, as uh, as he's going to have to do against Brian Christopher. He's, he's really got a bad cut on his, on his head where the Moondogs hit him with that chair. His head is cut open. Tom uh, just about doesn't need to try to finish this bout. He probably needs to see a doctor, but he's fighting his way back in there. Well, Christopher is oh, not the kind of guy that'll just wrestle him straight up oh, either. No. He sees the weakness, and you know he's going to try to capitalize on it any way he can. Oh, I love many clothesline there on Pritchard. Christopher follows down with that leg. Working Dr. Tom Pritchard over, and Pritchard holding the side of his head there where he got cut open. Oh, Christopher won't give him any. Boy, he's lighting Pritchard up. Pritchard comes back with a big shot. Ryan Christopher, reversal here. Pritchard comes off, sets him over. He's got a pin, two. He got it. He got it. One, two, three. Pritchard gets the win. How about it? Tom um, Pritchard grabs the Southern heavyweight belt and hoists it above his head. He has just defeated Brian Christopher here. Christopher has just been defeated. No, no. I want my belt back. That was not a title match. You brought the belt out here. No. We already had our title match. That's not a title. I want my belt back now. 
from behind. I oh, oh, all right, come on. It down. That powder is still on the floor. Oh, and he grabs him by the hair. And look out. Tom Pritchard coming after him. And there goes Brian Christopher headed out of the area here. Tell you what, Dave. It's a title match on that card. Tom Pritchard deserves a title match. Put his name in the title match. He will get a title match. Hey, I beat the captain. That makes me the captain. You get a title match. Then the count is he has to get the belt back. Oh, I don't it. like it no well. It's better than you. But you put his name in the title match. You will get a title match. Yeah, you got it. We're, we'll make that change. We'll be back with you right after this. And here we are, still uh, with a ring full of flour. Well, the match, uh, the match over here, uh, an impromptu match that uh, that was set up, uh, challenged by uh, by Brian Christopher. Actually, as he challenged uh, Tom Pritchard into the ring. Pritchard, as you saw, got the pin, but uh, uh, it's it's a technicality, and none of us are happy about it. Eddie Marlin certainly not happy about it, but we're going to get that taken care of right now. Uh, by golly, I'm not sure exactly what's going to come up right now. I think we're going to have a standby match, if uh, if I am correct. Uh, coming up, uh, yeah, let's let's see here. Yeah, here they come. Here comes some opponents. Oh, uh, we've got. Uh, well, look, that looks like one of the invaders back and uh, the outlaw. Yeah, look at here across the way. Hey, we got a pretty good standby match. You got Cat Garrett and the Dirty White Boy with Dirty White Girl in the corner. Tony Anthony and Cat Garrett. What a team that should be. Hey, Tony. Good to have you here, and good to have you here for this uh, for this match. After uh, what has happened so far here today, we have had a wild one once again. Cat oh, yeah. Garrett starting out. This young man, I tell you, I believe he has quite a future. He's a stocky wrestler, but he's got some talent starting against the invader, and here's Corey. Cat Garrett, as you said, he's a big wrestler and can really move around that ring, too. Nice move there by Cat Garrett. Now, this bout will go to the expiration of time. The remaining time we have on TV here today, Dirty White Boy Tony Anthony comes in, working the invader over, and he has been worked over today. The invader goes down. Dirty White Boy takes Cat Garrett. Elbow by Garrett. Whips the invader into the ropes. Oh, big drop kick there. What a good move by Cat Garrett. A big guy got up in the air and a good-looking drop kick. Tag 30 white boy, Tony Anthony. Tony. Elbow, working the invader over. Headbutt on the invader. 
Tony's quite an athlete himself. I, we hadn't mentioned it in a long time, if ever. Tony used to play football at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. He uh, he has quite an athletic background. Boy, I tell you, the danger right there, that flower, Cat Garrett just slid about uh, a foot and a half across the ring. The footing is not good in there. Could be a factor. Indeed. Garrett whooped over to the other side of the ring, all the way across in the turnbuckle, and the invader goes after him. Sets Cat Garrett up. Throws Cat into the road. Cat comes off with a big foot. Takes the invader down. The invader. I think he twists that mask a little bit. He's trying to find his partner and went over to the wrong corner. Garrett whips him into the road. Big close line on him. Time is beginning to be a factor here in this bout. We don't have much of it left. And dirty white boy Tony Anthony slamming the invader now. This dirty white boy. Tony's a tough wrestler, too. Ooh. Tony poked him in the eye. He apologized in advance. Ooh. Big down to the mat. Yeah. The invader bounces off the flower covered mat. And that boot, Tony, kind of was one of those big motorcycle boots, too. Not a regular wrestling boot, but one of those big boots. Cat Garrett slams the invader right into the mat. Picks him up, setting him up for a suplex. Boy, did he snap him over on that one. Cat Garrett, wrestling out of Gallatin, Tennessee. There's the dirty white girl looking on. The invader knocked into the ropes and through the ropes. Dirty white girl down the near ringside had to step back out of the way to avoid being run over as he was falling out of the ring. Tony Anthony threw him back in there. They make the tag. Cat Garrett will be leaving. That's a good knee lift from Tony Anthony. Good move. He sets the invader up for a double upright fist there. He caught him. The tag is part of Cat Garrett. Cat comes in. Takes the invader and whips him into the ropes. Elbow from Cat Garrett. Cat Garrett's a big guy. Coming in is the outlaw. First look at him here. Steps into the action. Garrett whips him into the road. He took him down. The outlaw comes down and dirty white boy Tony Anthony in the ring. Whips the outlaw to the other side of the ring. Takes Cat Garrett. Oh, reversal. White boy goes in and catches the outlaw. There's the pin cover. Two and three. They got it. One, two, three. A double slingshot wrapped it up as Tony Anthony and Cat Garrett team up in fine fashion to defeat the team of the outlaw and the invader. They get themselves a victory here. And I'm happy to report we have just completed a match. It was not interrupted by the Moon Dogs. So I think perhaps the pairing Miracle. that uh, we uh, had that was made earlier, the six-man pairing, has a lot to do with that. I'll explain what I'm talking about in a little more detail. Let's take a moment and check the card coming up Monday night at the Mid South Coliseum. Opening match of the night, 7:30. There you've got the man of the 90s over on the right, Tony Falk. He will be going against Dr. Tom Pritchard in the opener. Following that ladies title match the ladies title on the line as miss texas will be going against lauren davenport then a grudge match scheduled i'm not sure it's going to occur and i apologize still haven't had time to check this out but i'm suspecting that eric embry will not be the opponent for dirty white boy this uh, in this situation here uh then uh, i do know for sure there's going to be an eight-man mixed tag team match lauren davenport tony falk nurse cratchit dr death on one side on the other side you got the dirty white boy the dirty white girl dr tom pritchard and miss texas wild Should be, there. Yeah. yeah very wild action in the eight man uh, eight person mixed yeah. tag match southern title on the line now there's Look a change here 
a change here. Brian Christopher, the champion, he will be putting it on the line. And come to think of it, I'm not sure Tony Falk's going to be going against Tom Pritchard in the opening match. Here's the important one right here. Brian Christopher will be going against Dr. Tom Pritchard, as Tom will indeed have another shot at that Southern title due to the situation which occurred here today. And many people believe he actually should go in there as the champion, but uh, Brian Christopher on a technicality says he never signed the match. So Christopher goes in as the champion. Tom Pritchard will be challenging. The belt will be on the line at the Coliseum. Then, ain't a bit of the night. Jarrett, Lawler, and, believe it or not, Eric Embry on mm. their side to go against the Moondogs and Richard Lee put them all in the ring and it may be bye-bye for the Moondogs it will be bye-bye for Eric Embry. If he turns on Jarrett and Lawler, he will not wrestle in the USWA again. Or what a Texas. Night. Remember that. Or Texas. That's, That's right. right. 7.30, Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. It promises to be one you don't want to miss. Parking will be free Monday night at the Coliseum. Wow. We hope you'll join <laughs> us back here for more USWA action next week. Until then, for Corey Macklin, I'm Dave Brown. So long, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of USWA Championship Wrestling.